to like summertime vegetables or growing your own homegrown fruits and vegetables. Uh, in, the, in the late winter, early spring, you can actually start growing your own uh, transplants and we'll have to buy those. A lot of cases it's to your advantage to grow your own because you can actually choose a lot of different varieties of uh, vegetables that you can't find growing as transplants or even growing at the stores. So what we're going to show you today is actually starting your own seeds at home. It's a very easy pro process. You want to start about roughly four to six weeks from the ideal planting time. So that usually here, here in central Alabama usually means like end of, end of uh, late February, maybe to early, early March. So today we want to grow our own transplants and we're going to do a few examples of showing how they can be done in several different methods. A lot of people actually would just grow them in a, in a good six pack, nine pack of soil and drop your seeds individually into the different seed packets and those do very well. Lately, the last few years, one of the easiest methods is actually using these little jiffy peat pellets. Various brands make these little peat pellets that come up and they will swell after you put add a little water. That only, not only does that help increase the moisture, but also increases the, the livability of those seedlings to come up. And they just put, once they come up, you actually have a little greenhouse to hold that moisture in and protect those young seedlings. So today we're actually going to demonstrate a few of these. Uh, for the little peat pellets, we're actually going to add a little hot water to our pellets. The warm water is going to be absorbed by these pellets and these pellets are actually going to swell before our eyes. Now it looks like a lot of water, but these little, little rascals will actually swell quite fast and, and they take up a lot of water. To get seeds to come up, moisture is critical. So moisture from these little peat pellets will uh, increase our chances of roots uh, germinating and the seeds to germinate and take it off very quickly. And these seedlings will actually sprout quite fast. So you can see here, they're already beginning to swell right before our eyes. In about a few seconds, these little peat pellets have swollen up to a nice side and absorbed a lot of water. Now we're going to actually plant these. Uh, they have a little indention that, that they usually make and make a little circle, a little circle hole with your pencil if need be. And we're going to drop a few, in this case, a few tomato seeds here, probably about two per pellet. You always want to try to put at least two in case that first seed doesn't germinate and you have a back, sort of a backup plan. Seeds do take a while to, to germinate, but if the conditions are right, they can actually germinate in around three to seven days. And I'll show you the, the trick on, on doing that next. But drop uh, you, whatever vegetable you want to grow. It could be an annual, it could be a perennial, it could be a tomato plant. You know, whatever you want to grow. And we're going to put these in here. We're going to actually put these down here in the peat and cover them up real good. The peat serves as a good soil media. It holds a lots of moisture, which is critical for that root development. Just push those down real nice and tight. Don't want to bury them too deep. But just gently cover them over with part of that peat. The same, with, same process would, would occur if we were doing in the, in the so, just regular uh, soilless media over here as well. Okay, so our plants are planted. The next step is also, especially if you're growing multiple rows or multiple vegetables, is you better make sure you put a label on what these are. These particular plants are actually better boy hybrid tomato plants and you want to make sure we note what these are. Once they come up, there's no way of knowing what kind of tomato it actually might be. So label is, is critical. The next step is probably the most important. Here we've got our seeds, we've got them planted in the peat. We've got an area that they can hold in. And we're actually going to create a sort of a humidity dome or a greenhouse. And a lot of these kits come with the trays, the pellets, and the lid. We're going to take this and put this on the lid. 
That lid does several things. Not only does it trap that moisture in, it's going to, the humidity of that moisture being trapped in there is going to encourage, drastically encourage germination. Okay? Once they're planted, they're ready to go. And now we have to do is have a little patience and wait. We're going to move these to a warm spot. And the, probably the best place to move those is to, for a few days, is the top of a refrigerator. Where the, actually the bottom will be warm by the refrigerator. It's a nice, good, warm environment there in the kitchen. And then hopefully we'll, we'll keep an eye on the next couple of days and see if we have any germination. So we'll check back in a few days, see what happens, and then we'll move to the next step to, to how to take care of your seedlings once they've germinated. A few days ago, these seeds, probably about four days ago, these seeds actually sprouted after we planted them. That's a pretty good time. As soon as those seeds begin to sprout, we need to immediately move those to, the, to a, uh, an artificial light. That's very, very critical. So once a few of those seeds actually start popping up, we then move them to a light. Here in my utility room, we have a, a fluorescent lights that have been placed on a shelf to provide the adequate light source that these little seedlings need. As soon as they pop up and start coming out, we want to remove that plastic greenhouse cover and then we want to move them to the light. They're surging for the light. In many cases, people who try to grow these seedlings at home uh, notice that the seedlings begin to lean toward the light, lean toward a window, become very lanky, and sometimes they even fall over. That's due to not enough light. These seedlings now are thirsting, hungering for light. They need approximately 14 to 16 hours of light. Our, a southern window, lights in our home, are not going to provide a, probably enough adequate. We're trying to duplicate what the sun is providing. However, the sun is too intense for these young seedlings. One way to get to control your lights during the day, especially if you're going to provide 14 to 16 hours of light per, per day, is have a timer. These timers can be programmed to come on, come off. In this case, the lights are coming on about 6 o'clock in the morning, and then they go off at 9 o'clock in, in the evening. It gives them several hours of rest and the process is continuing. So we have here just a homemade greenhouse with lights in here in the utility room. We're putting these lights as close as possible to these seedlings to provide that light source to, to make them grow. You can see they come up very well. Uh, most of the seedlings came up. I do want to point out though that two different varieties here, in this case we're growing the tomatoes, some seeds came up better than others. That means comes to packaging comes to cheap seeds versus quality seeds. I do know for the fact the ones on the right were probably one of those little 25 cent pack of seeds and they are, there's some starting to spread up but they're just not as good as a good quality seed. So be careful with bargain seeds. Now we're providing adequate light. These things are going to take off, they're going to grow quite fast. Remember earlier when we started these seeds we watered those peat pellets very heavily with water. Now that they're being exposed to the elements they will soon dry out very quickly. So we do have to start supplementing water over time. One well, of the best method of keeping these seedlings dry is watering them underneath. They are made of peat and so they will quickly absorb this water like they did before. So we'll just add a little water over time. You'll begin to notice these things as they dry out. The, the moisture in the peat will change colors. The seedlings may start to droop a little bit or wilt. So every so few days we'll check our water and we want to add more water and let it be absorbed, keep it moist for adequate growth. Now, soon, probably another couple days, when we get a little bit more height, we'll actually begin to add fertilizer. We like to start with a young transplant, uh, seed starter type fertilizer, very low in fertilizer nutrients, especially very low in, in nitrogen, and we'll start adding supplement that. You know, get you an old milk jug, tea jug, one gallon jug, do some water soluble fertilizer, very small parts per, per that one gallon of water and just supplement that over time. That's going to provide the adequate nutrients that we need. One last thing we want to touch on is seedling thinning. You'll notice that several of these actually little seedlings have popped up and we did this on purpose. We planted two seeds per peat pellet just to ensure that we at least get one. Um, so we have one here, two there, two there, two there. We've got, in this case, on the Better Boys, we actually have a seedling in every single pot. That's good. We've got 100% germination. Uh, in, in this case, having at least 100% of having plants. We do need to go back and take our fingernails or a uh, pair of scissors and actually clip these seedlings very small so that we can reduce these down to one seedling per peat pellet. 
this competition that's going to fight for sun, going to fight for nutrients, fight for water. And so once the seedlings get up and you have a good sturdy plant, choose the best plant that's very sturdy, not too lanky, not leaning over. Choose the best one and leave that one and take out the other.